Vital fluid congeals in rusted pools. Rigor mortis sweeps across rooms of tattered limbs painted in viscera through desperation and rage. Malformed creatures claw at your flesh as you snuff out the last iota of life they've latched onto. The voices continue to admonish insatiably thirsting for blood, pain, and carnage. The cackling of the terror mass continues to echo in the vestibules of your mind as you vainly attempt to quell its influence. In spite of the ramifications to yourself, you push onward to retrieve your beloved from precipice, leaving only death in your makeshift road to salvation. Splatterhouse follows the story of Rick Taylor. After having suffered a fatal blow at the hands of the corrupted, Rick watches as his girlfriend Jennifer is kidnapped by the twisted Dr. Henry West. Seemingly powerless to prevent the events unfolding before his very eyes, Rick serendipitously happens upon the terror mask who exhorts adamantly that they join forces. Having no other choice, Rick dons a mask creating a symbiont bond in return for the power to save Jennifer and stop Dr. West. Splatterhouse weaves a tale that is reminiscent to classic B-movie horror films, with all of the cheese, gore, and violence that you'd expect from the genre. Infused with a fair dose of dark humor, the story will keep you interested throughout the 6-8 to eight hour campaign length, and the dialogue, while hit or miss, is enjoyable and often pokes fun at itself. For without faith, I am nothing. And without me, you're fucked. She doesn't have to die. I can help. Much like the arcade classic from which it's based, Splatterhouse makes sure to paint the walls with the arterial spray of any creature foolish enough to impede your progress. Living up to its namesake, pints will spill like H2O in a thunderstorm, making this title one of the goriest games ever released. While painting the walls with platelets is fun, it must also be stated that it's a precious resource that the Terror Mask must consume in order to become more powerful. Blood is used as currency in Splatterhouse, giving Rick access to new and more powerful means of dismantling enemies and bosses. Many of the more powerful attacks won't be accessible until the second half of the game, forcing players to rely on hit and run tactics during certain encounters, especially when beginning the game on the default difficulty setting. Splatterhouse is definitely challenging, but not entirely by design. It seems as though there are plenty of instances where the developers took notice of game design flaws and attempted to ameliorate them by giving Rick specific abilities and attributes. This doesn't necessarily expunge the flaws, but it does temper them somewhat. In most combat scenarios, Rick can be overwhelmed fairly quickly, due not only to aggressive enemies, but also to an overwhelming lack of kinesthetic feedback from the game itself. In many instances, it's somewhat of a shock watching your life bar deplete, making many deaths feel unwarranted due to the game's inability to communicate danger to you, the player, whilst being damaged. Even if you had the sagacity to attempt to avoid the danger preemptively, using the game's dodge roll in most cases won't avoid damage due to the roll's lack of invincibility frames. Oddly enough, invincibility frames during a roll can be acquired through upgrading, but in all honesty, it should have been part of Rick's default repertoire, as is almost always the case in titles of this genre. After coming to terms with some of the design quirks found in Splatterhouse's combat mechanics, you will quickly learn to circumvent enemy attacks and deal massive damage through means that don't always feel entirely rewarding. After learning the ins and outs of the combat system, it's easy to fall back on surefire ways to dispatch of most enemies, rather than experiment with the breadth of attacks that Rick has at his disposal. Oddly enough, this glaring flaw doesn't detract from the overall experience, mostly because it gives this title an old school feel wherein you aren't necessarily concerned with the means used to dispose of foes as long as they become stains after you've interacted with them. As to whether or not this was intended by the designers is anyone's guess, but it's highly unlikely and may again be an odd instance of serendipity. Splatterhouse seems to venerate old school beat em ups, which may or may not overwhelm players with a welcome sense of nostalgia. It may not be the most intricate or deep combat system the genre has ever seen, but it is competent enough to keep you entertained and satisfied due to the graphic ways you're able to assault your future victims. 
While combat makes up the majority of the gameplay experience that Splatterhouse has to offer, there are some light platforming sequences to break up the monotony. However, these sequences are awkwardly handled and can become frustrating due to the glitchy jump mechanics which will inevitably lead to cheap deaths. Exacerbating an already annoying flaw are the load times which range from 15 to 30 seconds in length. Oddly enough, this is after the game has been installed to your console's hard drive and it doesn't help that the load screens themselves aren't particularly easy on the eyes. The capricious checkpoint system can also provoke your patience during these platforming sequences, as well as certain boss battles. While the bosses by and large are entertaining, there do exist a few sections where a QTE must be completed before the boss is put to rest. If you fail one of these QTE sequences, you will be killed, prompting the annoying load screen to return, and of course you must again whittle down the boss's life bar before attempting the QTE again. Splatterhouse's most damning flaw, however, is how underdeveloped it feels overall. This is a title that pervasively makes use of QTEs, yet recycles the same death animations ad nauseum. The 2D sections are a nice homage to the original Splatterhouse trilogy, but again, they feel underdeveloped and void of any real significance beyond their ostensible allure to old school fans. Many sections of the game are plagued with technical issues. The audio will cut in and out from time to time, the frame rate is inconsistent, combat can become repetitive, and the game features more than its fair share of bland environments and muddy textures. While it may be simple, Simple to excoriate this title for its many flaws and write it off as a failed attempt at rebooting a classic franchise, Splatterhouse definitely gets a lot of things right. Aesthetically, the game is a true successor to its arcade brethren, delivering on its haunted house atmosphere while blending the gratuity found in many modern horror films with the over-the-top action that only a video game can provide. One of the most aesthetically pleasing aspects of this game is Rick's character model. While in battle, the model will become drenched in blood, and if Rick takes too many hits, his body will accrue damage signified on the model itself through exposing sinew, muscle, and bone. Rick can even lose limbs if attacked by certain enemy types, and the effect used to show off his healing factor is pleasing to look at. Splatterhouse also features a fitting soundtrack which consists of remixes from the classic titles, as well as a hard-hitting metal soundtrack that somehow accentuates the violence being performed on screen. The music will keep you primed and ready to tear off torsos, grind down flesh, and dislodge limbs. Besides the campaign mode, Splatterhouse features a survival mode that spans around 8 levels. Each level has 20 waves of enemies that must be overcome. If you can survive all of the waves of enemies, you will be rewarded with photos of Rick's girlfriend Jennifer. Remnants of these images are also scattered throughout the campaign mode, and when all the pieces of a specific image are collected, you can listen to a brief conversation between Rick and Jennifer, giving you some insight into their relationship. The seductive images of Jenny aren't the only unlockables that Splatterhouse has to offer. By finishing the game once on any difficulty, you will unlock the original Splatterhouse trilogy. Even today, the original trilogy is both challenging and fun, but very much like the modern reboot, they don't have the most novel or deep gameplay, but somehow make up for their lack of depth with their atmosphere, grotesque designs, and chilling music, which somehow molds these titles into an alluring pastiche that transcends the sum of their parts. Splatterhouse is a worthwhile successor to a classic trilogy that blended shock and awe with gratuity and atmosphere. While not a perfect game by any means, Splatterhouse exhibits enough heart, fun, and action to garner a 6 out of 10 from me. There's no denying the overabundant technical issues, and there are plenty of missteps to be found in the overall design of the game, but if you have the patience to come to terms with its flaws, Splatterhouse is a fun ride while it lasts, even if it turns out to be somewhat bittersweet due in large part to the story's conclusion. Splatterhouse caters specifically to a certain demographic and makes no compromises in attempting to satisfy its target audience with some of the most over-the-top and brutal action ever rendered on a game console. If you are a big fan of horror, metal, the original Splatterhouse, House trilogy or all of the above, I have no reservations with recommending this game to you, especially at this point in time when the game can be found on most retail sites for around 10 to 15 dollars. Oddly enough, it's readily apparent that the creators of this title had a deep respect for the source material, which shines through even during the most infuriating blemishes that you are sure to come across during your playthroughs, and that, at the very least, is deserving of my respect and gratitude as a fan of this franchise. With that said, I hope that you all enjoyed my review of Splatterhouse. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to hear from you in the next one.